Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth video in my machine learning with Python uh, series. And in today's video, we are going to be going over saving our models and how we can kind of plot data on a grid and actually visualize some of the stuff that we're doing. So essentially what we're going to do today is we're just going to use the pickle module that comes built into Python to save our uh, models. We're going to be creating multiple models and trying to save the best possible one to use in the future. And then we're going to be plotting things like on a graph that we can kind of look at. Uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we actually need to do is we need to uh, import another module or install another module. So you can see here I've got uh, my tensor environment already loaded up and activated. So again, reminder, you can activate and then whatever the name of your environment is and just hit enter. Uh, I'm just doing this again in the little terminal in PyCharm. Now what we need to install is we're just going to say pip install matplotlib. Okay. Now this is just a library for doing like basic graphs and grids and stuff. Um, so do that. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to hit enter. That'll take a second. And I think that's actually the only module we need for today. And in the future, we probably won't have to install any more modules because I think we have most of them already now. Okay. So we're going to import matplotlib now. So matplotlib, uh, dot pi plot as pi plot. That one is always a, a long import statement. Okay, so import matplotlib dot pi plot as pi plot. And then we're going to import, um, what do you call it, pickle. And this should actually already be installed with your Python. If it's not, for some reason, leave a comment down below or go to techwithtim.net and leave a thing on the forum. Again, if you guys wanna follow along with all the code here, it's gonna be up on techwithtim.net. So go on there, uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can see the text-based tutorial and all the code and the video and all that, okay? Uh, now we're actually gonna import something from matplotlib. So from matplotlib, import uh, style like that. And this is just because we're gonna change the style of our grid. Um, now what should we do first? I think what we're gonna do first is actually save our model and then we'll go into drawing some of the stuff. Okay, so why would we want to save our model? Well, you guys may have noticed already that in our case, uh, our model trains really fast, like under a second is how long it takes to train. So it doesn't really make sense to save it in our instance because well, it, it's so quick that it's training. But on a lot of other uh, models that are training off of like hundreds of thousands of pieces of data, you don't want to have to retrain your model every time you're going to use it. And if you can find a model that has like a 90 something percent accuracy or like a very high accuracy, you probably want to save that model as opposed to uh, risking it in because you can see our model fluctuates between like 80 and 90 percent. So essentially, we'd want to save the highest scoring model to use that um, on our future data sets, right? So um, the way that we can do this is really easy and it's using pickle. So what we're gonna do is after we score and we uh, fit the model, we can actually just, we can literally just <laughs> pickle it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say with open and in here, we're just gonna name this whatever we want. I'm gonna just name this student um, model, okay? Dot pickle. And then we're gonna open this in uh, WB mode, okay? And it's just gonna write the file for us essentially if it doesn't already exist. And we're gonna open this as F. Now this is really easy and all you have to do to actually uh, save this is you do pickle.dump and then what you're going to do is you're going to put what we're dumping, in this case linear, which is our model, and then into the file f. Okay, so pickle.dump uh, linear f. So this is essentially going to save a uh, pickle file for us in our directory and then we can open that and use that. Uh, don't ask me how pickle works because I honestly can't tell you, but all I know is it saves the model for us and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So now what we're gonna do is we need to read in our uh, pickle, right? So read in our pickle file. So to do this, uh, once we've created this file, obviously, which is gonna happen here, we're just gonna say uh, pickle, and it would probably be good if I spelled pickle, right? So pickle in, you can name this whatever you want, equals uh, pickle.load, I believe, yes, load. And then we're just gonna take this, so student model.pickle, and throw that in there, okay? And I think that might be it. Or no, I think I actually am messing this up. I think what we have to do is we have to open, sorry. And then let's do this student model.pickle. And then we're gonna open that in RB mode. Okay, yes, that looks correct. Let me just double check here. And yes, that is, sorry, that is how you do it. Now what we have to do is we can load this pickle into uh, our linear model, okay? So we call it linear. So we're gonna say linear is equal to pickle.load and then 
pickle in like that. Okay, so now this is going to load um, our model into the variable called linear. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this to generate the pickle file. And then I'm actually going to just delete all this and show you that this is actually working just by loading in the file. And we don't we're not retraining every time. Okay, so let's run this one and let it go through. Give it a second. Okay. And now if we go here, you can see we have a student model dot pickle uh, file over here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out uh, from here. So one, two, three, and we will go to one, two, three there. So now all we're doing is we're just loading in our pickle. You can see we're skipping the whole training process and the saving of the pickle. And uh, we'll just see if this works now. Okay. So run this and you can see that we're getting no errors and everything is working just fine. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that is essentially how that works. Okay, so now that we've saved our model, uh, I want to show you how we can save like a better version of our model. So essentially what I want to do is I want to continue to keep, uh, what do you call it, trying to save a model until we get a certain score. So until we get like above 90 or above 95 or something like that, okay? So the way that we can do this is really easy. We're just going to use a for loop or we could use a while loop actually. But um. What I'm going to do is we need this X train X test. Uh, okay, so let's just do this. I'm going to type it out and then we'll kind of talk about what's happening. So let's say four underscore because we don't actually care about this variable in range. And then type whatever range you want. I'm just going to type like 30. And I'm going to set a variable best up here. And this is just going to keep track of the best score we've gotten so far. Okay. And let's do that. Okay. Now what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if um, ACC, which is our accuracy, okay is greater than our current best score, what we're going to do is we're going to write to the file uh, that new model that we've just trained, okay, because we did the linear model and then we fit it, right? And we're going to set our best equal to ACC. So now essentially, we're only going to save a new model if the current score for that model is better than uh, any previous one that we've seen. And we're going to do this 30 times. Now, you guys could technically do this like 10,000 times, and it probably wouldn't take that long. Um, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just going to do it 30 times. If you guys can find a model that gets like 95% and you like messed with all these and stuff, just let me know because that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of cool. All right. So we'll do that. Um, and what I'm going to do is we'll just say, we'll just print out the accuracy each time just so we get some kind of output so we can see what it looks like essentially. All right. And what we're also going to do is I'm just going to take this and put it up here and I'll talk about why I'm doing this in just one second. Okay. So let's run the file and let's see what we get. Okay. So you can see that happened like almost instantly and we can run through and we can see here our highest accuracy was probably 95 unless there was a higher one here. So that would mean the model now that we're training off of, uh, would be that 95 accuracy model. Okay. So uh, what we can do now is we can actually get rid of this for loop just by simply uh, commenting it out. So we're not going to be training any more models now unless we wanted to keep going. And what we'll do here is we'll just load in the model that we just created and use that. Now, the reason that I've redefined this up here is for this exact purpose. So when we stop um, like retraining the model, uh, then we still have this X train, X test, Y train, Y test, because we do some stuff with that down here, right? And essentially, you might be asking, why are we getting different scores each time we run this model? Well, that's because every time we do this, like this test size equals 0.1, we're getting different training data, right? So you would think if we have the same training data, the model would be the same every time. But essentially, since we're splitting this and 90% is going to one and 10% is going to the other, it just randomly selects them so that our model is going to be different each time because we have, we're training off of different uh, data, right? Okay, so now we have that, this should be working, um, but I've already ran this enough times, you guys already know what this looks like. So let's actually get into uh, plotting things on a grid so we can see what they look like. So we're going to use matplotlib to do this, and the first thing we're going to do is, I'm just going to copy this in because it's kind of uh, a weird name, and I always forget how to spell it, but we're just going to do style.use and then ggplot, okay? Essentially, this is just going to make our uh, grid look like half decent, okay, in matplotlib. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plot a few pieces of information. So to plot our information, what we're going to start off by doing is we're just going to set up a scatter plot. Now we could do like a line graph kind of, or like a connected graph, um, but there's a lot of points and they end up getting like kind of messy together and they don't connect in a proper way. I tried this earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a scatter plot. So essentially to do this, we're going to do pi plot uh, dot scatter. And then we need to give an X and a Y value. So for our X value, what we're actually going to do is we're going to say data 
And then what we're going to do for this is I'm going to set a variable and I'm going to say P equals, and in this case, I'm going to do G1. Now P, this is going to be one of your attributes, okay? So you can pick uh, G1, uh, G2, study time, failures, absences. So one of the features pretty well. And then our Y value is always going to be the label, which is going to be G3. So we're going to do data. Um, and then in here, we're just going to type P. So it's more like dynamic and we can just change it here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do data and uh, what do you call it? G3, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're just going to set up some labels for our axes so we know what is what. So we're going to get pyplot.x label and our x label is going to be p, okay? And then pyplot.y label and this is going to be, what do you call it, final grade. So instead of g3, I'm actually just going to say final grade because we already know what this represents. Now to show the grade, we'll do pyplot.show and this is now essentially just going to show us a grid. So actually let's run this and see what we get. So we still get the same output. And now you can actually see what our data points look like. So this is our grade one, so like the first semester grade, and this is the final grade. And you can see the correlation between them. Now, obviously we have some outliers out here, but uh, for a majority of them, you can see like that a best fit line would look like something like that, right? Like I was kind of demonstrating earlier in the last video. Now, if we want to see the correlation between other uh, features and our final grade, well, we all we have to do is just change this. So I could say put G2 here instead, and we should get something similar. So we can see it just shifted over a little bit, um, but it's similar data points. Now you guys may notice, well, you like there's 600 students. Why is it only showing this many points? Well, essentially a lot of the points are overlapping. So you can kind of see on some of them how they, they're not perfect circles. Um, but that's essentially why, because the grade points were rounded to uh, to be out of 20, so not like perfect percentages. So that's why we're not seeing 600 points here. We're only seeing like, I don't know, what, like 100 or something. Uh, so yeah. So anyways, we can also look at other ones with some other ones here, study time, failures, absences. And this is a good way to kind of see uh, what correlation we're getting between different points, right? So for study time uh, here, you can see we're getting this very like linear line going up. Um, and I mean, you guys can look here and see uh, if study time really is affecting the final grade or not, right? So this is a good way to look at a graphical representation of uh, all these things. So failures, let's uh, type this one in here and see what this looks like. Uh, again, very similar thing to uh, what do you call it? The uh, study time, sorry, what am I saying here? And we can see that people with three failures typically had a lower grade than people with zero failures, right? So there is some kind of correlation here. And that's what I'm trying to get at with this linear regression. And then obviously for the last one, we could do absences like this and see what this has to do with a uh, final grade if there's much correlation. Yep. So again, we see if someone had 70 absences, typically they're lower, right? So we can see kind of some correlation here, right? Um, in how that works. So anyways, that is how you can kind of plot different points on a graph. Uh, if you're using a scatter plot, literally just pick like what two points from data you want to plot. Um, and then you can give an X label, Y label, show it, and just use this style if you want it to look half decent. So anyways, that has been it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be moving into classification algorithms. So it's, it's uh, K nearest neighbors. Some of you may have heard of it before. Really interesting. It's going to allow us to classify things into different kind of categories. Whereas this one was just giving us like some kind of linear prediction or number prediction. So as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like. All of the code is up on techwithtim.net and I will see you in the next video.